Hello everyone, this is Mario. Welcome back to my channel and to the fifth episode of my Group on my FTG career in Pro Cycling Manager. So we come to this one from kind of a bittersweet episode in the previous one. We had several podium finishes, but I was unable to get any win with my riders. So of course, the main goal for this episode will be to take at least one stage win. So we are currently riding Paris-Nice. We already completed three stages. We are today riding the fourth stage and also we will start the Tirreno Adriatico. So in this episode, I'm expecting to ride the first four stages of the Tirreno and also three more stages of the Paris-Nice. So none of the races will be completed in this episode. Both will be finished in the next one. So as I said, in this episode, we will begin the Tirreno Adriatico. It's a seven stage race with two time trials. The first one, a team time trial in the first stage, 21 kilometers long. It's completely flat. Then we have a hilly stage for stage two, then a flat stage, another hilly stage, which is probably one of the hardest in this race. Then another hilly stage on stage five, another flat one on stage six and a flat individual time trial of 10 kilometers to wrap up the race. So there are no big mountains in this race. It's mostly hilly stages, but quite long. Two of the stages are more than 200 kilometers long, so it's not going to be an easy race at all. The rider considered as the top favorite for the GC win is Emmanuel Buchmann, is also going to have to face riders like Alejandro Valverde, Woodpools, Enrique Mas and Nairo Quintana, Roman Bardet and Ilnur Zakarin as well. So it's not nearly as strong as the field we have in Paris-Nice, but there are still quite a few strong riders in this one. As for the sprinters, we also have a good set of sprinters with Elie Viviani, Dylan Grodenwegen, Pascal Ackerman and Sam Bennett as probably the strongest, so it's going to be pretty hard to try to win some sprint stages. As for my team, I bring Rudy Mollard and Marc Sarre as the top riders for this one. Marc Sarre will obviously be contending for the sprint stages and I will try to do my best with Rudy Mollard to get a decent position in the GC. Our sponsor wants us to get a top 5 finish in this race. I probably should have brought another rider as the team leader for this one. I don't know if I'm going to get the top 5 with Rudy Mollard. I will try my best for sure and of course also try to win a few stages. So let's get on with the racing and with this first stage of the Tirreno Adriatico. Rupa MFTG is considered as the top favorite for this time trial. Let's see what we can do. And so CCC is the first team to start this team time trial. It's also one of the strongest teams, one of the top favorites for the win in this race, in this stage, sorry. Um, I'm going to be the 14th team to start the time trial. So let's see, we will have a good idea of how the teams are doing by then. And so my team is now starting the team time trial. I already set the effort level to 99 for every rider and also the time they are going to be relaying. I'm not taking any relays with Marc Sarre. He's clearly the worst rider in my team in team time trials or in time trials in general. So I won't use him. Um, also, I'm having a bit of luck because several of my riders are on a good race day condition. Rudy Mollard on a plus three race day condition today. And Stefan Kung, my best time trialist, on a plus one. So he's having a 79 virtual uh, time trial stat. So let's see how we do. We are now five kilometers from the first intermediate checkpoint. The best time there was from CCC. They also have the best time in the finish line. So being led by Armirel, we cross the intermediate checkpoint three seconds behind CCC. It's not a bad result, so let's try to keep this up. And so we are now 2.5 kilometers from the finish line. The best time is still belonging to CCC. 
we have Stefan Kung leading the team until the final uh, kilometers, until the finish line. Let's see what we can do. Let's check our time. And we get the second time, 15 seconds behind. So we now have Team Ineos almost at the finish line. They had the third best time in the intermediate checkpoint. The best time there is from Bahrain Merida. Quite surprising. So let's see what Ineos does. They are second with the same time as CCC. And now let's see Bahrain. They brought the best time from the intermediate checkpoint. Can they beat CCC and Team Ineos in this team time trial? And they finish third, one second behind. We now have Team Katusha finishing their race. They had the fifth best time in the intermediate checkpoint and they finish fourth. So just ahead of my team. So in the end CCC won this stage. They were on the same time as Team Ineos but they got the win. Only one second behind Bahrain Merida led by Rowan Dennis. Then Katusha Alpesin in fourth and I got fifth place with Rupama FTG 15 seconds behind. It's not the worst result, but considering I was the top favorite at the beginning of the stage, it's kind of disappointing. And so, because he was the first rider to cross the line from CCC, Amaru Antunj is going to wear the leader's jersey in the next stage. And so now, going back to Paris-Nice, we have a 209.3 km long hilly stage. Of course, the top favorite for this one is the king of the hilly stages, Julien Lafilippe. I will of course try to do my best to have another Frenchman winning this one. And so we are underway for this fourth stage between Vichy and Pelusin. Um, it's going to be a long one and fortunately today Thibaut Pinot is on a plus two race day condition, is on a 85 mountain stat, 75 hill, also good secondary stats. So let's see, maybe we do have a chance of doing something uh, good with him today. Maybe try to go for the stage win and if possible to gain some time over the other GC contenders. And so we are now just about halfway through this stage. We have a breakaway group of eight riders in this one. They currently have almost three minutes over the peloton. Um, it doesn't really seem like they are going to be able to contend for the stage. They were put under a lot of pressure in the initial kilometers. The peloton was pacing really hard, so they probably don't have much in the tank to try to win the stage. So with about 80 kilometers to go, I'm having Jacopo Guarnieri to pace a bit at the front of the peloton. Although he won't be able to do it for much longer, he's almost exhausted. Um, so my idea is to try to put some pressure on the other riders before this downhill that will take the riders to those final four categorized hills in this stage. And so with 50 kilometers to go, the riders are already uh, past the first category two climb of the day. Again, like in the previous climb, uh, Anthony Perez for Cofidis was the first one at the top of the climb, so he's really trying to collect as many points as he can for the mountain classification. I tried to pace a bit with Guarnieri in that climb in the peloton. I didn't create much trouble to most of the riders, but now, well, there's a fall now. Tony Kalopa, Jakob Fuglsang falling. Let's see, a lot of Astana riders falling here and who is behind? Omar Freil is abandoning the race. So going on another climb, I'm again going to try to pace with Leo Vincent, but other teams are also putting a really strong pace. It's not being easy to survive in this one. Let's try to keep Thibaut Pinot and Sebastian Reichenbach in good positions. Valenta Madlai and Steve Morabito are almost out of energy. And I think I will have to use um, Sebastian Reichenbach to protect Thibaut Pinot very soon. So now on the final climb, let's try to push it really hard with Valentin Madwa, with Thibaut Pinot trying to follow, being protected by uh, Sebastian Reichenbach. But actually this is, uh, maybe this is not the best option. 
Let's see, let's go now with Thibaut Pinot being protected by Reichenbach, but Reichenbach is also out of energy already. There are still 10 kilometers to go. We are just behind Arthur Vichot, almost being caught. I'm maybe pacing too hard with Thibaut Pinot. Uh, I don't really know what to do. Should I try and attack? I don't really have the terrain for that right now, while the energy gel is kicking in. Let's wait a bit more before this uh, little bump here, and then I will maybe try the attack. We have 19 riders left here in this group. Thibaut Pinot still leaving. It's a good idea to be at the front, because, well, then there we have a downhill until the end. Let's go at 90 now. Almost at the top of this climb, let's go at 99 now with Thibaut Pinot. Oh, is this too much? This was too much. I cannot keep this effort with Thibaut Pinot. I won't be able to take the stage win. Let's try to follow on the wheel of uh, Julien Lafilippe going to the descent. Can we still take the stage win? It's not going to be easy. There are still 14 riders here. Let's keep on the wheel of... Ala Philippe, and let's try to launch the sprint now. Let's see what we can do. Can Thibaut Pinot take the stage win? He is not going to be able to do that. And the stage win is going to be for Simon Yates. Simon Yates wins the stage ahead of Julien Ala Philippe and Primoz Roglic. Thibaut Pinot is only 8. It's not what I wanted, but well, we didn't lose any time, so it's not bad either. So Simon Yates wins stage 4 of Paris-Nice ahead of Julien Lafilippe. And incredibly, Cyril Gauthier is still the leader in the GC. Arthur Vichot is leading the mountain classification ahead of Luis Mentiez. And Caleb Ewan keeps the lead in the points classification. As for the best young rider, Egan Bernal is leading with the same time as Miguel Ángel López. So I struggled a bit with the strategy in the end. I may have wasted a lot of energy with Thibaut Pinot and Pinot could not keep up with the other riders. He finishes 8th on the same time as the other favorites. So for the GC goal, everything is still up for grabs. Now jumping back to Tirreno Adriatico for stage 2. It's a hilly stage. We have Rudy Mollard among the top favorites for the race, but well, it's not going to be easy. We have Alejandro Valverde and Mikhail Kwiatkowski as possibly the two strongest riders in this type of stages. And so we now have completed 30 kilometers in this stage. I was trying to take Tobias Ludwigsen in the breakaway today. I couldn't do it early because he was uh, really far behind in the peloton. But then when I tried to attack, I couldn't really do it. Other teams were pacing really hard, uh, including Team Ineos. So I basically just quit uh, from trying to get my riders in the breakaway today. And with 110 kilometers to go, we still have Bardiani and Nere Sotoli, Neri Sotoli sorry, pacing really hard at the front. Now finally we have Bardiani attacking with Barba. Uh, or with Barbin. So also Neri Sotoli is trying to attack and now I have Ludwigsen really far behind so I won't go for the breakaway. Let's see how we can do. The other riders in the breakaway are already pretty exhausted so it's not going to be really easy for them. Yeah, they cannot even follow the two riders that attacked just now. So it's going to be Zardini and Barbin. They are going to be the only ones left from this breakaway. And with 70 kilometers still to go in this stage, my team is now the one pacing at the front of the peloton, with Tobias Ludwigsen and Stefan Kung um, at the front of the peloton. Let's see if we can stretch the, the peloton a bit. And I now just said Peloton three times in succession. So yeah, uh, let's try to increase the pace a bit and give something for the other teams to think about. And now with 37 kilometers to go in the stage, we are three from the intermediate sprint 
uh, from the second intermediate sprint on this uh, stage. We are on the wheel of Dylan Groenewegen with uh, Marc Sarre. Let's see if we can get any points for the points classification by doing this. Let's see, this is possibly the best wheel we can have. Let's launch the sprint now with Marc Sarre almost going to the line and Groenewegen is the first with Danny Van Poppel the second. Marc Sarre I think was the third. And with 20 kilometers to go we have Stefan Kung again pacing at the front of the peloton. We have stretched this peloton quite a lot. There are quite a few gaps uh, opening up in the peloton. Um, they are constantly being opened and closed. So let's try to continue the pace with Stefan Kung at the front and see if we can create a few more of these gaps. It's not going to be easy at all. We have another uphill right now and then this is probably going to stretch again in the downhill. And so we are now approaching the final hill with 9 kilometers to go. Now with Konovalovas pacing at the front. Let's actually use the energy gel on Antoni who is protecting Rudy Molar. And also try to move Molar a bit more to the front. Let's actually use the relay uh, option with him so he can stay close to the front without being the one pacing. Let's increase this with uh, Konovalovas to 90. Let's continue pacing with Konovalovas. And other riders are now going. We have to go harder with Rudy Molar, I think. Let's go now, force the pace with Rudy Molar. Or maybe actually go... No, yeah, this has to be it. Let's try to do this at 90. With Rudy Molar dropping a bit now. And this still... With Antoni Roux, only the two of them. Let's go, let's go. Two kilometers to go. Oh, I opened a, a small gap. Can I take the win here? Oh, this is going to be too close. This is going to be too close for Rudy Molar. He cannot take it. I don't think he can take it. Let's go at 99. And sprint now is not going to win the stage. It's going to be Mikhail Kwiatkowski or Alejandro Valverde. Who is going to take the stage win? It's Alejandro Valverde taking the stage win in the second day of the Tirreno Adriatico ahead of Mikhail Kwiatkowski. And I think I did kind of the same mistake I did um, in Paris-Nice with Thibaut Pinot by attacking too early. And Rudy Mollard finishes 8th. Actually, I think it's the same as Thibaut Pinot got in the previous stage of Paris-Nice. So Alejandro Valverde wins the stage ahead of Mikhail Kwiatkowski. And after this one, Kwiatkowski is going to be the new leader in the GC. Valverde takes hold of the green jersey for the mountain classification and also the orange jersey for the points classification. In the meantime, the best young rider is Ivan Garcia Cortina from Bahrain Merida. So that was a bit of a shame. I really tried hard to win the stage. I paced really hard for most of the stage. But in the end, Rudy Molar was short of energy too soon. And he couldn't compete with Alejandro Valverde and Mikhail Kwiatkowski, who were, from the beginning, the top favorites for the stage win. And so now, going to the fifth stage of Paris-Nice, we have the only time trial of this race. 25.8 kilometers of individual effort. It's not going to be the easiest of stages for Thibaut Pinot. He's of course not among the top 10 favorites for this one. But fortunately today he finally activated his fitness peak. So let's hope that he's feeling strong today and that he doesn't lose a lot of time to the other contenders. So the first rider from my team to start the time trial is Jacopo Guarnieri. Is of course not the best time trialist. And so I'm now about to finish the time trial with Leo Vincent. He's going to be really short of energy, just going to the finish line. And he's going to get the 15th best time, 127 behind. Uh, the best time so far is from Richie Port. He, we have to remember that he lost 9 minutes already uh, in one of the stages in Paris-Nice. So he's really far behind in the GC. So we are now about to start the time trial with Sebastian Reichenbach. He's feeling really good on a plus one race day condition. 73 time trial. 
of course is not going to win the time trial, but still I'm hoping for a decent result from him. Also now departing Valentin Madois is not on a plus one race day condition as Reichenbach, but still having plus two on his time trial stat. And so we are now on the uphill section of this time trial with Sebastian Reichenbach. In the first intermediate checkpoint he was already losing 35 seconds. The best time there is from Kasper Asgren, who in the meantime beat the time of Richie Port in the end. So let's see now on the second checkpoint, Reichenbach is already 1 minute and 11 behind. So it's really not a fantastic result by him. And Thibaut Pinot is now starting the time trial and oh my, is on a plus 5 race day condition today. Is having 80 time trial. I cannot believe this. I need to take advantage of this. The problem is I really don't know how I'm going to do that. And in the meantime, Reichenbach finished his time trial and oh, I blew it with Valentin Madois. I didn't uh, put down his effort after the hill and is going to lose a lot of time in the end. Let's go back to Thibaut Pinot, he's 18th in the first intermediate checkpoint, 15 seconds behind the best time of Tom Dumoulin here. So well, losing 15 seconds to Tom Dumoulin is not a bad result, but considering the stats I'm having with Thibaut Pinot, I think I can do a lot better. But let's try to take advantage of that in the uphill section of this time trial. So now approaching the second intermediate checkpoint, let's see the time of Thibaut Pinot. And he's losing 13 seconds, 30 seconds, sorry, is 11th here. Tom Dumoulin still has the best time in this uh, second intermediate checkpoint, ahead of Geraint Thomas and Kasper Asgren. In the finish line, Asgren still has the best time. But Tom Dumoulin, well, now Tom Dumoulin just beat his time. 23 seconds faster. Let's go back to Thibaut Pinot. I think I need to drop the pace a bit with him now. So he doesn't um, overuse his energy going to the final kilometers. He's now 2 kilometers from the finish line. Let's check the time of Geraint Thomas. He was 9 seconds behind before. He loses 17 seconds. He's got the second best time here. Let's now increase the pace a bit with Thibaut Pinot, going to the final few meters of this time trial, and is third, 23 seconds behind Tom Dumoulin. And now we have Primoz Roglic, he was losing 3 seconds in the intermediate checkpoint, 200 meters to go, and Primoz Roglic is second, 9 seconds behind. Now let's see the time of Julien Lafilippe. And he's 17 only, 59 seconds behind. Now Simon Yates is going to be the penultimate rider to finish the time trial. He had the 20th best time before and now he's 19, losing one minute. And finally, the yellow jersey, Cyril Gauthier, is going to lose the lead today. Gauthier is going to lose 2 minutes and 19 today. So Tom Dumoulin wins the time trial, 9 seconds ahead of Primus Roglic, 18 better than Geraint Thomas and the new leader in the GC is of course Tom Dumoulin 7 seconds ahead of Primoz Roglic, 18 ahead of Geraint Thomas Thibaut Pinot is now 4th in the GC so apparently 4th best is what you can do in a time trial with Thibaut Pinot when he's having a plus 5 race day condition oh I just hope I just hope he can get another plus 5 in stage 7 and so another day, we reach the 15th of March. Today I'm going to ride the 6th stage of Paris-Nice, coming from a really decent performance by Thibaut Pinot in the previous one, in the time trial in the 5th stage. Also today, the fitness peak of Valentin Madwa was activated, so he's going to be surely in a good race day condition. So today we have most of our riders in a poor race day condition. Valentin Madwa, even though he activated his fitness peak today, is on a minus one race day condition. I wanted to take him on the breakaway and to make matters worse, 
he was really in the back of the peloton so i'm trying to get him to the front and take him in the breakaway he's four minutes and 34 behind in the gc so i think you will be allowed to go in the breakaway today and so with about 100 kilometers to go we have 13 riders in the front of the race in the breakaway group over five minutes ahead of the peloton i did manage to take valentin madois in this group Oh, and we have a fall. Geraint Thomas fell. Let's see if he's going to continue in this race. Yes, he keeps on with the race. Let's see if um, Team Ineos is going to wait for its leader. And they are waiting. Also, Sunweb is waiting. Oh, because Tom Dumoulin is here. I didn't even notice that. Tom Dumoulin fell as well. Can I take advantage of this? Oh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't do this, right? Yeah, that's that's kind of lame. But they aren't really pacing that hard to get back to the front. This is kind of a weird behavior. And now Team Ineos is finally pacing hard. Uh, also Sunweb doing its share of the work. So yeah, let's just let them get back. And so in the breakaway we are now in the first categorized climb of the day. It's a category 2 climb. We have 7 points available here for the mountain classification as Fernando Gaviria falls. Oh, a lot of riders falling. Egan Bernal and Julian Lafilippe as well. Dylan Tunes and Miguel Angel Lopez. I'm not going to look back. We are 2 kilometers from the top of this climb and I'm going to try to take the points with Valentin Madois. We have some attacks now. Let's try to follow them and try to go for the points with Valentin Madois here. It's Javier Moreno attacking and let's go with Valentin Madwa now let's try to take the top points here it's not going to be easy can he take them oh it's going to be close and it's Perez Perez takes the points Valentin Madwa took 10 oh he has 10 points now he already had a few how many did he have before he had five so he was second in this climb and so we are now already going for the second categorized climb of the day. I was caught a bit behind. Let's try to take some points with Valentin Madwa. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. Oh, I was too far behind. This was not ideal at, at all. I didn't take a single point with Madwa in this one. And so we are now on the final climb of the day. The peloton is trailing the breakaway riders by a little less than three minutes with 22 kilometers to go so it's going to be really tight i think we do have a chance to take the win from the breakaway i don't know if i should make an early attack with valentin madwa or if i should wait for i think i need to i need to attack let's try and attack now with valentin madwa and see what we can do we have kind of a flat section now let's try to do the best we can with valentin madwa Oh, this is a bit tight. Let's try to follow. We cannot follow here. And I'm not going to take any points, I think, for the mountain classification on this one. But I just want to drop a few of the other riders. Can I do that? Madwa is getting really exhausted. And it's going to be Perez again taking the points. Madwa is third in this climb. So with 9 kilometers to go, we are on the wheel of Rick Zabel is possibly the best sprinter from this group but i think i will need to attack early with valentin madwa we have a downhill after a small climb so i'm actually already using my energy gel the peloton is two minutes behind so they are not going to take the stage win that's for sure let's see five kilometers now to go let's move a bit to the front and maybe try to attack now with valentin madwa can we do this? It's a strong attack by Madwa, but his energy oh, is going to be dropped. He's not going to be able to continue with this effort, I think. We now have the downhill section. He's a bit ahead of everyone else. Can he still do this? Oh, I don't think he can do it. Let's start the sprint already with 1.3 kilometers to go. He's not going to take the win. It's going to be Gianluca Brambilla. Is, go is the Italian going to win? He is winning the stage. Valentin Madwa tried to go too early and is actually the last rider from the breakaway. So Gianluca Brambilla takes the stage win from the breakaway.
so there are no changes in the top 10 of the GC. In the mountain classification, Anthony Perez is now the new leader, Caleb Ewan keeps the lead in the points classification, and Egan Bernal is still leading the young rider classification. So I did make the right call by sending Valentin Madwa in the breakaway, they were the ones contending for the stage win, but in the end I didn't perform as well as I should, and Madwa ended up being the worst positioned rider from the breakaway. So now going back to Italy and to Tirreno Adriatico, we have stage 3, the first chance for the sprinters to take a win, and so we are already underway in this stage, 220 kilometers, it's quite long, so I really think that this is going to be for the sprinters. And so with 35 kilometers to go, we are now the ones pacing at the front of the peloton, and we have for a moment created a few gaps in the peloton. It is now again compact, but it's going to open up again. So these small hills um, here and there are really creating some problems and some of the sprinters are being left behind. And so with 11 kilometers to go, Davide Valerini is the final rider from the breakaway to be caught. We have assembled our sprint train. We also have Team Jumbo Visma with a strong uh, lead of the peloton. And we are now 5 kilometers from the finish line. Also already Stefan Kung leading the peloton, putting his really strong flat stat uh, to effect. Let's see what we can do. It's not being easy for the other riders to follow Stefan Kung. Soon Anthony Ru will be pacing. Let's go with Ru now and also start sprinting. This might be too early. I think I went too early with Anthony Ru. Let's go now with Marc Sarre. Oh, everyone else went too early, but I'm not going to take the win with Marc Sarre. It's going to be for Dylan Grunewagen. And the second is going to be Elie Viviani. And Marc Sarre is a really decent third in this stage. So, yeah, I'm not disappointed with the result I got. So, as expected, this ended up as a mass sprint finish. Dylan Grunewagen was the strongest. And with this win, he now also leads the points classification with 20 points. There were no other changes in the other classifications. Mikhail Kwiatkowski is still leading the GC. In the mountain classification, Alejandro Valverde is still the leader. And the best young rider is still Ivan Garcia Cortina. And so, to wrap up this episode, we are going to continue in Italy to ride the fourth stage of Tirreno Adriatico. We have several short but very steep climbs uh, in this stage. So yeah, if I do want to try and take the fifth place the sponsor wants, I really need to have Rudy Mollard performing really well today. And so we are underway for stage four of Tirreno Adriatico. And when I was really in need of a strong day by Rudy Mollard, he's on a zero race day condition. So it's not really spectacular. And today I'm going to try to go with Stefan Kung in the breakaway. Let's already attack with him, actually. And then let's try to relay and wait for other riders. And maybe I will also try to put Anthony Hu, who is on a plus one race day condition. Um, I also want to put him in the breakaway today. And so, as I wanted, I managed to take Stefan Kung and Anthony Ru in the breakaway. Today we have 13 riders in this group. They currently have over 3 minutes um, on the peloton, but still 167 kilometers to go in the stage. And with 55 kilometers to go, Stefan Kung is over for the day, so I'm going to drop him back to the peloton to try and do something to help out um, Rudy Mollard in the end of the stage. So as Jelle van Andert tries another attack, everyone else in the breakaway quit from the effort. So now I have Anthony Roux back in the, in the peloton. So this is quite handy, it's going to be really helpful for Rudy Mollard, I think. So as we approach the first of the two climbs of um, Cappuccini, I'm trying to think about my options. I think if I wait for the final climb, I won't be able to take the stage win. 
so I may actually try to do something with um, Rudy Mollard in the previous climb and then I will try and attack with Rudy Mollard pretty soon I think let's go whenever Konovalovic is done and I'm 400 meters to the top of the climb let's try the attack with Rudy Mollard but he's being blocked by his own teammates nah this didn't go as I wanted did not really go as I was expecting so it does create a small gap let's try to recover a bit of energy in this downhill um, but everyone else is following on Rudy Mollard so this is not going to work so going again for Cappuccini let's try to pace with Anthony Roux at the front we have um, TJ van Garderen attacking let's go at 99 with Anthony Roux and keeping uh, Rudy Mollard on his wheel Let's use the energy gel now and soon I will maybe have to launch Rudy Mollard for an attack. Let's drop the pace now with Anthony Roux. I don't want to overexert him. Let's go at 99 now again and try an attack with Rudy Mollard. He's not going to be able to drop anyone I think. And let's go at 99 after the attack on this downhill section. This is not going to work. Jack Haig is just behind us so and everyone else is also behind us we are three kilometers from the finish line let's drop this effort i don't need to go as fast otherwise i won't have enough rev for the final sprint let's see 1.6 kilometers to go now let's go at 93 and let's start sprinting now with Rudy Mollard this might have been too early can we take the win no Mikhail Kwiatkowski is beating us pretty easily and Rudy Mollard is out of energy. Mikhail Kwiatkowski wins the stage. Roman Bardet is second. Jack Haig third. Rudy Mollard comes in fourth. So this was a pretty intense end to the stage. Mikhail Kwiatkowski was one of the top favorites for the win today. And he got it. In the GC, Mikhail Kwiatkowski keeps the lead ahead of Woodpools and Greg Van Avermaet. Rudy Mollard is now eighth in the GC, 31 seconds behind. And after this stage, Rudy Mollard is the leader in the mountain classification. He's on 30 points. He had a few already before this stage, but he took quite a few in the final two climbs of the day, so he now leads in the mountain classification. The points classification is led by Mikhail Kwiatkowski ahead of Dylan Gronewegen, and the best young rider is Henrik Maas. So I didn't get the stage win today, but Rudy Mollard did pretty well. I'm really pleased with the way he rose and with the fourth place in the stage. Also, we managed to open a few gaps in the in the peloton, and only ten riders finished the stage on the same time as the winner. We had riders like T.J. Van Garderen and Emmanuel Buchmann losing 23 seconds. Also, Henrik Maas uh, lost 59, and so with this one, we finished this episode. I think this might have turned out to be a bit longer than I was expecting in the beginning, but I will now only have to ride 5 stages in the next episode to finish both Paris-Nice and Tirreno Adriatico. This has unfortunately been the second episode in a row where I didn't win any stage, so the pressure is starting to rise and we will definitely need to get a stage win in the next episode. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode, and if you have, please click the like button. Also, please comment below and tell me what you think I did good and wrong on this episode and in these stages. And even more importantly, tell me what you like and what you don't in my series. So I hope to see you soon for episode 6 of my Groupama FTG career in Pro Cycling Manager. Bye!